What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again and today people, today. We have another info explosion of information. At the time of recording, Bungie has just released the first teaser trailer going over Strand and alongside it, a blog post. Now I'm going to go ahead and digress for a moment because I'm going to be real, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be real honest. None of these teaser trailers have really done it for me. Don't get me wrong, there's one moment in the Game Awards teaser trailer that did have me go, oh, um, that could be interesting. It wasn't hype per se, but it looked interesting, and I certainly did want to know more. You know, provided they didn't just show us the end of the DLC. But other than that, the marketing has, I don't know, kind of felt mid. And that's so weird, because one of the things that I consistently praise Bungie on is their ability to put together a teaser trailer. And I asked you guys over on Twitter, and you thought, well, basically kind of sort of the same thing. So it's not just a me thing, at least in a small sample size, before anybody goes, but Joker, that's not everyone. That was just a poll on Twitter. No shit, Sherlock. And the sad part is, if I didn't say that, there would have been comments. So send me your hate comments in the comments below, because engagement. Jokes aside, I'm not sure whether this is a Sony thing or a Bungie thing, truth be told, I can't be bothered to do the research on that. But it is what it is. Regardless of who's responsible, I gotta say, I'm just not feeling the same enthusiasm for Lightfall. Like, even the fanboys who are normally very defensive over any new release just don't seem to have the same vigor in the comment section. Pardon me for saying, but the teasers just don't inspire confidence. They don't tease. It's just more of the same. Oh, we'll use this ability that kind of freezes and has a grappling hook to it in locations that are little more than cardboard, drywall, and set dressing to fight AI that really hasn't changed in, well, damn near a decade. Oh, and there will probably be a horde mode, not horde mode. The only question is, does it ship with the DLC or the season? And do we throw ball or dunk ball? Digressions aside, we all know that I'm not going to use Strand anyways, past what I have to do to review the subclass and the product, unless it comes packaged with the best shoulder charge option in the game and Works with Skullfort, has built-in Skullfort, either or works. Look, I like what I like, you like what you like. And with Strand, you can quite literally swing from your own tree while I shoulder charge mine. But without further ado, because there has been well too much ado, let's dive right into the trailer so we can pad out the video like every other YouTuber. Of course, the timestamp to skip should be on the screen right now. Strand flows through you. As it flows through everything. Now is the time to lean into using Strand. Not back away from it. the current takes you. That was fun, right? And here's the thing about being underwhelmed. You can only be strung along for so long. Eventually, those threads run thin, and the puppets begin to see the strings. So, if we're tied down by low expectations, we can only be pleasantly surprised. So with the release of the Strand trailer, Bungie also released a thread containing their thesis on the idea, weaving together a yarn about why we should care about Strand. AKA an ability that, well, kinda sorta resembles stasis, 
but green and with a grappling hook. And hey, look, I'm not knocking the hook. I'm so hooked on the hook, you can call me Captain Hook. Looks fun as fuck. I really hope they get the feeling of the hook down. But everything else looks like bad stasis. Our article starts with Guardians, prepare to unlock the mysteries of Strand in Destiny 2 Lightfall, trademark. Players will gain access to brand new elemental powers to add to the current lineup of Void, Arc, Solar, and Stasis. Like its predecessors, Strand will offer players exciting new abilities and powers to dominate on the battlefield. Oh my, dominate on the battlefield. Well, isn't that a little naughty and kinky, you know, given that we're tying people up. Wink wink, nudge nudge, whip whip. With Strand, Guardians will be wielding the fabric of the universe in ways that will be a formidable threat to anyone who stands in their way. That's really interesting to hear because I'm interested in all these strings that will connect the various bits of lore in the ever-expanding web that graphs Strand on to what came before. But the real question is, will Strand be a game changer or will it be the real threads of shite? But let's not get tied up in clever wordplay and back to the thread. I'm sorry, the puns, they're too easy. Threads make the Guardian. Hmm, I really should have saved that threads of shite joke for like 2.5 seconds. Oh well, I guess I just got bound up in all the silliness. From the neon drenched streets of Neptune's secret city of Neomuna, to Guardians soaring through the skies by grappling to an enemy spaceship, it's clear from the start that Lightfall is different. Really? I mean, like, really, really? Really? Different? Uh, mm -hmm. because, look, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but yeah, sure, these environments look cool. Looks like somebody went and took the cyberpunk game, took Night City, and then gutted everything that made Night City interesting out of Night City. So now we just have this, what, neon backdrop of cardboard, drywall, and set dressing to kill the same AI that we've basically been killing for the past 10 years? Look, I'm really hoping for more, but mmm, it's not, not that different. I mean, it looks nice, don't get me wrong, but functionally, it's just, more of what we already have. But hey, that's just my string of thought. But back to the article. Yes, things are coming to a head in the penultimate chapter of the Elric Saga. I mean the Light and Darkness Saga. But Lightfall's influence and inspirations prove that there's been plenty of room for the team to let loose and revel in their creativity and craft and have some fun. But not too much fun because that would be an over-delivery and over-delivery is bad for train stations. One of the touchstones the team drew from was the bombast and flair of 1980s action cinema. Think of an era of film where no explosion was too big, no action set piece too over the top. That aesthetic informed much of Lightfall's tone, and it certainly had a big influence on Strand itself. Even before it was formally known as Strand, the team had many concepts for Damage Type 5, as it was originally called in development, before aligning on the feature set and lore that brought it to life. Oh yeah, 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 sure. 80s action movies had a lot of, um, tying people up in them, I guess, with explosions. Uh, well, you know what? No, no, no. People were taken hostage in a lot of 80s action movies, so I guess that maths? Look, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, Shibari is about to hit Destiny Rule 34, like crack hit low-income housing in the 1980s. Hey! 1980s movies. Got it. Nailed it. There we go. It all comes full circle. We had a couple of frontrunners, concepts, for a while, says Destiny designer Kevin Yanis. Part of my desire was to have something more astral in the game. Strand also aligned really well to the fantasy of the product. The 1980s action hero. Now look, maybe it's simply because we haven't seen enough of Strand, with the whole BDSM, immobilize, tie your enemies up, ability set, which hey, to be fair, don't threaten me with a good time, still kinda sorta just sounds like a reflavoring of stasis. Just, you know, hey, kinky. As Kevin Giannis puts it, there wasn't a single, uh -huh. moment. Well, I would hope not. You kinda want multiple of those in quick succession over a long period of time. <laughs> God. Okay, okay, sorry, I'm back. Composure. As Giannis puts it, there wasn't a single ah moment. 
where all the threads of Strand fell neatly into place. Instead, it was the result of a continuous dialogue with the team about what would make for exciting gameplay, what would make sense from a narrative standpoint, and how they could make those ideas manifest in the game. Through those discussions, Damage Type 5 slowly morphed into something a bit more specific, then called Dark Telekinesis which evolved further, eventually manifesting into what you see today. We had a lot of conversations around where the strand concept known as Weave came from. There's another bondage joke in there somewhere, but guardians make their own fate, and so we are the weavers of fate. Anyways, sorry. They had a lot of conversations about where the strand concept known as Weave came from, and trying to reinforce the physical language for how it manifests and how it looks, to make it feel like it was from the same darkness family as Stasis, Yana says. Well, I mean, they succeeded because it kind of just looks like stasis without the freezing and more kinky while being neon green. Now, it sounds like I'm giving Strand a lot of shit, but devil's advocate. If you look at light-based abilities, they're all damage-based abilities, and a lot of times even they feel like they overlap. More so now with subclass 3.0, when classes really did lose a lot of their identity. If Bungie is having a hard time making damage-based subclasses where the sky really is the limit feel different, then subclasses that are about control, about freezing, about binding, trapping, slowing, there really is going to be an underpinning of, well, this new subclass is just the old subclass, but with a different color. And the flavor of the subclass really does come from the nuance of the subclass. And all MMOs have to figure out a way to address this problem. Final Fantasy XIV, for example, has tanks, they have DPS, they have healers. All the different versions of these classes basically are there to do the same thing. However, it's the different differences that make them enjoyable to play. What I feel like Bungie has done a poor job at doing with the marketing of Strand is demonstrating how Strand is different from Stasis, outside of the grappling hook. The more the team talked, the more the concepts and evocative language that describes Strand with terms and descriptors like weaves, tangles, and universal strings of consciousness came to be. It's everybody building on everybody's ideas, said designer Eric Smith. How we chose to implement these things affects how we talk about it, and vice versa. Like weaving objects instead of spawning objects, or summoning objects. It became part of the aesthetic. That's really great PR speak for saying, yeah, we took mechanics that already exist in the game and then reflavored them, and by filing off the serial numbers, we're gonna totally convince you that it's not just Arc Buddy, that it's not just a stasis turret, that it's not just what the colony does, but as an ability. So the next section of this thread talks about the verbs and their definitions, the fiber behind Strand, if you will. I'm going to skip some of this because as we unravel this post, it's quite the yarn. Suspend. A suspended PvE enemy is lifted off the ground for a brief duration and is essentially disabled. In PvP, suspended players are lifted off the ground, but can still move, albeit slowly and can fire their weapon to fight back. Question, who at Bungie, just what sadist at Bungie, thinks that players actively like having control of their character taken away because somebody else pressed a button? I just wanna know. Like, who actually thinks this stuff is fun to play against? And we know that people don't like this because of stasis. We've already done this. But Joker, you can still fire your weapon. Yeah, remind me, how many times did Stasis Slow get nerfed? Because gasp, shock, horror, lightning crackle, lightning crackle, lightning crackle. People don't like being slowed. People don't like having control of their character taken away from them because somebody else just pressed a button. And I bring this up not to complain, as I'm sure people will accuse me of doing, but to make a point. Just think back to how stasis went from the most powerful thing in the game to relative obscurity, at least as far as PvP is concerned, in six months. Do we really want that again? I mean, it's too late now, and all we can do is hope that it's balanced in such a way that if anything needs to be done, it can be brought up, not brought down. But if not, we've already seen how this song and dance plays out. I guess my question ultimately is, why would Bungie do this again? In. Unravel. Attacking an unraveled enemy will cause threads to burst out of the target and attack other nearby targets. Once hit, that target will also become unraveled. 
So... volatile? Sever. A severed enemy is less capable of affecting the material world, reducing their damage output as a result. So a... 40... well, I guess 30% resilience investment? Ooh, 1% raiders are not gonna like this. The major buff coming to Strand is Woven Mail. With this ability, the Guardian is sheathed in a protective mesh of Strand Matter, reducing incoming damage. Note that in PvP, Woven Mail will only reduce damage taken to the body. Head damage and melee damage will continue as normal. Oh, thank god, I was worried there for a second. I mean, Destiny is a game after all, where the headshot hitbox is anywhere from the bottom of your rib cage to your little pinkito. So... No, this will probably still be a pain in the ass in PvP, but, um, yeah, just hit your headshots. Which, I mean, should be easy enough to do when you are actually allowed to play the game. Provided you're not being strung up or strung along. One of the most exciting new abilities in Guardian Strand's toolkit is the grapple. With this ability, players can press the grenade button and their guardian will weave a hook from strand matter which can grab onto an anchor point. The grapple hook will then begin contracting, pulling the guardian along. Strand's grapple can create its own grapple point out of thin air, so you can always propel yourself through the sky even if there's not a solid surface to latch onto. Guardians will also be able to execute execute melee strikes during or at the end of a grapple, known as grapple melee. Dun dun dun! Which will deal bonus damage, unravel an enemy, and push them backwards. So that sounds cool. Now I assume for the sake of argument that Strand will be basically more or less mandatory in the story mode. Kind of like how that weird psychic thing that's name escapes me at the moment was mandatory in Witch Queen, even though that wasn't really an ability, it was mandatory for a lot of progression. And Stasis was mandatory for parts of Beyond Light. But after that, well, here's the thing. What can this grapple hook do that people can't already do with eager edge or knowing how to jump other than the super cool super melee. This isn't a criticism by the way, I know people are going to be like, but Joker, it's a grapple hook, didn't you say at the beginning of the video you were all hooked on the hook? They could call you Captain Hook because you're that hooked on the hook? Hold on, let me explain. I want to know how this will be significantly different, more so in PvP than any other modes of movement currently in the game. More so when it costs a grenade to use. I just don't feel like Bungie has demonstrated the value of this ability within their own sandbox. Oh yeah, sure, we had that really cool moment in the trailer where somebody grapples on to a thunder-striking titan, but okay. Didn't they just nerf that, by the way? So... It is what it is. I'm excited for the grapple hook. Put a grapple hook in a game and just as long as it doesn't suck, it's probably going to be the funnest thing in that game. But why I need this? The blog post then goes on to talk about how all of these new abilities interplay and work, but honestly, it sounds a lot like the way all the other classes kind of sort of already play with a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and it doesn't really matter because, well, we're still mowing down the same brain-dead AI that we've been mowing down for, what, the better part of a decade? But I digress, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the classes. Warlock Broodweaver. Threadlings are explosive minions woven from strand matter. The Warlock Broodweaver, being the cerebral type is more in tune with threadlings than other classes. All threadlings will run forward, jump on enemies, and explode. But the warlock's threadlings will return to the warlock and travel with them if they can't find a target. Yay! Warlocks get another pet. This one sounds like Colony. Neat. But it's not just in summoning and wielding threadlings that warlocks excel. With their strand melee attack, warlocks cast Arcane Needle, a deadly projectile which tracks targets, causing high damage and unraveling them upon impact. Warlocks will be able to quickly chain three Arcane Needle attacks in a row. So warlocks get another projectile tracking melee? Oh, no, 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 no. They get three projectile tracking melees.
Cool. I mean, we're gonna have to see the damage on that. It says causes high damage and unravels them upon impact, but three high damage melees in PvP or three high damage melees in PvE? E, because those are two significantly different things. Warlocks have two strand aspects to utilize, and it's here where Threadlings once again enter play. Oh, I sure hope that Threadlings are good because Bungie is double, triple, quadrupling down on the Warlock pets. Weaver's Call. On Riftcast, the Warlock weaves three Threadling eggs, which hatch into Threadlings when they hit a surface. Any perched Threadlings are converted into additional eggs. Hey Warlocks, I hate to tell you, but you got another thing intimately tied to that ability where you stand in one place, with the long casting animation. Also, and this goes back to without numbers and without direct comparisons, we simply do not know. But if this isn't better than Arc Soul or Stasis Turret, why would people use it? And perhaps it doesn't need to be damage numbers, but Bungie doesn't really explain why anyone would take this over Stasis Turret or the Arc Soul. They don't explain how this is balanced against, well, its most direct comparison. Comparisons. Mind Spun Invocation. This aspect improves several of the Warlock's abilities. Grapple. When you execute a grapple melee, the Warlock weaves three Threadling eggs from the target. Threadling Grenade. You can consume your Threadling Grenade to generate a full complement of Perch Threadlings. Shackle Grenade. Oh my. You can consume your Shackle Grenade to gain a buff, creating a suspending detonation on every kill. The Warlock's telekinetic abilities culminate in their super Needle Storm, a deadly combination of burst damage and area denial. On cast, the Warlock conjures Strand Matter into a fusillade of hardened spikes, launching them forward with a wave of their hand. The missiles will stick into enemies and environment alike before detonating and reweaving themselves into an army of Threadlings that will hunt down any survivor. So, Blade Barrage meets Slova Bomb. That's actually really kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. Hunter Threadrunner. The Threadrunner's melee attack, Threaded Spike, has the Hunter hurling a rope dart that bounces between enemies, damaging and severing them before returning to the Hunter. Upon its return, it grants melee energy for each enemy hit. Hunters can catch the rope dart by pressing the melee input button at the right time. Perfecting that timing will earn the player an additional amount of melee energy. That sounds really fun, like a cute little mini game. But that also sounds like it takes a modicum of skill, and I mean, we couldn't have people jumping and shooting weapons or sliding and shooting weapons because that was too much of a skill gap. So, uh, I wonder how long until this gets nerfed. I'm not even joking. Hunter has two strand aspects available. Wow, that's all we get for Hunter before getting into the aspects. They went on and on and on about Warlock. Hunter, Hunter. Hunter, 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 the most played class in the game. I'm sure Bungie has a lot to say about Hunters. In Snaring Slam, while in the air, press the air move input to slam downward, suspending all nearby enemies. Widow Silt, this aspect grants an additional grenade charm. The Hunter's grapple ability creates persistent grapple tangles when it latches, which fully refund grenade energy when grappled too. Hunters can use this ability to set up chains of grapple points that their entire team can use greatly enhancing their ability to quickly move around in combat and or traverse the environment. The lethal combination of grapple and rope dart coverage with the Threadrunner's super Silk Strike. When activated, the hunter uses their grapple to freely move through the world in third person view. Hunters will be able to use the grapple more often during super and the rope dart features both light and heavy attacks. The light attack is meant for single opponents and can be used in air and on the ground. When on the ground, the hunter can chain attack seamlessly. Hitting an enemy with the tip of the dart deals bonus damage, and defeating an enemy with it causes the enemy to explode. The heavy attack has the hunter swinging the rope dart around in a 360 degree arc, damaging all nearby enemies. As with the light attack, this can be used on the ground or in the air. Berserker Titan. We're not talking about Titans because Bungie was all like, ha ha ha, Titans are the punchy class. Punching is the Titan fantasy. Even though by default, Titans do the same amount of melee damage as every other class, and they don't even have an OHK melee. But Titans are all about that punch fantasy. The punch fantasy that in the end game, well, 
I mean, get you boss stomped. Talk about being creatively bankrupt. And finally, we get to some of the fragments because it wouldn't be a new elemental power without fragments. Threat of Ascent, activating your grenade ability, reloads your equipped weapon, and grants increased weapon handling and airborne effectiveness for a short time. Threat of Fury, damaging targets with Tangle Grenade, grants melee energy. Threat of Finality, finishers generate Threadlings. Thread of Warding. Picking up an orb of power grants woven mail. So the Strand subclass, of course, is going to be a lot of, well, we gotta wait and see. However, just based on this article, I'm not sure if this mechanically moves the needle off of Void for Titans and Hunters, Stasis Arc and Solar for Warlocks, which is weird because Warlock was the one that they were really, really kind of advertising here, but um, in PvE, I'm not necessarily sure I feel it. But again, that gut reaction is simply based on what Bungie has explained here in a vacuum. With no numerical comparisons, we can only make best case guesses. And as of now, this just sounds like worse stasis with a cooler gimmick. But it could come out and have fast cooldowns, long debuff times, and do a shit ton of damage. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you are feeling particularly generous. Stay frosty.